Hi, this is another Megasplat uh, development log. This is number five, I believe. Um, we've been in beta for three releases. Uh, so this release I'm hoping to get out sometime this week. I need to do some additional testing on it. Um, the focus of this uh, release is the shader compiler. Uh, there are some new features though. I will show them first because they're uh, small compared to the shader compiler. And uh, another big focus was fixing some um, machine specific or sorry, OS and Unity version specific bugs. 5.5 uh, .5 just got shipped, so I went and did the whole compatibility pass with that and then discovered some bugs with the uh, brush rendering for um, these previews weren't working on 5.5 .5 correctly um, and only on Windows devices. Uh, the reason they're not working, I am still... Uh, completely baffled with because um, I basically have to put some magic numbers in there but only on those machines so I've put in a request with Unity to figure out what's going on uh, but for now I have some if tests in the code that should allow it to work on both. Um, if for some reason when you get to either of these screens if these are not showing up uh, if these show up as question marks it may mean you just need to regenerate the clusters uh, which you can do from the texture config um, but if this one isn't working and you just see gray here when you're changing things, uh, then that means there's some combination of uh, OS and version number that I have not uh, found the magic numbers for. Um, so uh, please let me know and I will uh, do my best to fix that until I can get a, an answer from Unity about what's going on. Um, so uh, one of the new features is uh, if I look on my camera here, I have this little thing called display texture name. Uh, it's a little script on the camera. And then if you look on the um, uh, actual meshes here, it now has this thing called a Megasplat Collection Info. And what this does is let you easily query what texture you're on from a raycast or a collision. So if you're hooking up sound or something like that and you want to be like, hey, when I'm walking on grass, you know, I want to have one sound if not another, uh, then this is the feature you use. So the way this works is that first you select your uh, texture array here, uh, and in your compile options you just set this export texture list and it will make this little scriptable object with the texture names in it. Now, the reason it does this this way is that you're including your textures into a texture array, and you're drawing them from a texture array. But all those source textures don't have to be in your build if you're only rendering them via the texture arrays, because you've already got them in the arrays. So if I just had, you know, if I included this uh, configuration object uh, into the build, then it would suck in a duplicate copy of all the textures. So instead, I have a little scriptable object that just has the list of names, and every time this texture array gets compiled for whatever reason, it will re-spit out those uh, names, and then um, it'll always be in sync that way. So then, uh, on any mesh or terrain, it works for either, you just add this component, and you give it that list of textures that, that the config spit out, and you tell it whether it's a one or two layer shader. Uh, this is so that on a two layer shader, it can actually look at both layers and determine whichever texture is uh, more dominant. Um, and on a single layer, it just you know grabs the first one. So, uh, so that's not a, you know a huge feature, but it, if you're trying to do some uh, sound work, it's pretty useful. Um, okay, so on to the shader compiler. Uh, so this is a pretty big change uh, to the way everything works in Megasplats. So I'm going to walk uh, everyone through it because uh, if you've never done it, it's probably going to be a little confusing the first time because it's a little different than the rest of Unity. Um, so the way it works now is that uh, I was running into the problem of having just too many options. And so what Unity does is when you build a shader normally, it includes all the code for all the options and then includes these things called shader features there's another variation called multi-compiles, but uh, the point is, is that what it'll actually do is generate every possible combination of shaders. And so with Megasplat, that was already running into three, four hundred shaders. That's why it takes a few minutes to install uh, just compiling those shaders. And some people would be like, hey, Unity locked up. No, it's just compiling all these shader variants. Um, so I reached the point where the shader compiler just gave up, uh, and I couldn't optimize things to... Um, figure out any any further way to pack it down anymore. Um, so instead what I have now is this shader compiler. And if you look at the mesh here, 
you'll see this first section here says uh, this, this says it's the shader compiler. And it has this big warning here that says, changes to these values will modify the shader source code. So what that means is that this material is using this shader and it will actually rewrite the code of this shader every time you change one of these options. And it'll re-spit out that shader with exactly the options you want. So the advantage to this is that we're, we're compiling one shader when we change one of these options instead of right at the beginning, you know, compiling hundreds, which would now be in the thousands of shaders. Um, so this allows me to add a lot more features to Megasplat. Uh, now, it does mean that when you change one of these options, you get a really small, uh, like if I switch to single layer, you get a really small delay where, uh, as it recompiles the shader. Uh, and then you can see, now we're at single layer, and then you can go back to double layer. But these options are generally things that you don't change very much. You generally set this up, you, you know, you don't touch it after that. And the warning is really about the fact that if you have uh, 10, you know, materials in your scene that are all using the sh same shader, when you change one of these options, you're not changing the option on the material, you're actually rewriting that shader. So if you switch this to triplanar texturing, you're switching it to, to everything that uses this shader. So that's what the warning is about, just so you know. Um, so in here, you can name, uh, you can put in the path that, that these will be in the right-click menu when you go to choose uh, shaders on, on a material. And you can also give it a name uh, so that you can find it. Um, then it has a shader type, which is basically mesh or terrain. The UV mode, which is triplanar or UV, and this works for terrain as well now. So uh, this this also brought a lot of unification to the shader system. So there's no longer these two arbitrary sort of collections of shaders I've designed. There's now whichever one you want. So if you want, you know, a triplanar UV with two layer, you can do it on terrain or on mesh or whatever. You can do any of these options. So there's only um, one minor restriction right now, which I will eventually uh, remove uh, if there's demand for it. Uh, so then you have your texture packing. Again, this isn't something you're going to animate, so it makes sense for it to be a compile option. And then you have your options for flow, uh, which I'm going to set to reactive um, or refractive. Uh, and so then it just recompiled the shader with the new uh, options. Now, if you're doing a terrain shader um, and it's on a uh, Unity terrain, there currently is not flow mapping options there. Um, it's totally possible to add it. Uh, the big thing there, and uh, it's the same for triplanar as well, because it doesn't um, so, uh, doesn't have a, a great spot to pull that information from on a Unity train. But what I'm going to do is um, allow you, if people want this, I'll allow you to uh, paint a flow texture for your terrain, and then you can pull the data from there instead of the vertices, and then that will uh, work out quite well. Um, so the other stuff here, uh, you can choose to have a macro texture or not. This is just like the old shader. Um, there's this new option called Splats Fade to Macro. And really, this was all possible before. It was just uh, you had to set the blend modes right to do this. And this is the way I do it, where the background is sort of a, a single texture that's fast to, to render, and then everything close has got all the mega splat stuff. Um, so you can just turn that on now and it'll hide all the functions and set those modes for you. Or you can come in here and set up your own modes with all the blending options and stuff. Um, uh, another thing to notice is that if you're looking for the detail texture, that is now one of these uh, layer modes. So you can switch it to the detail texture mode uh, and that will uh, give you all of the detail te texture options. You sort of realize that the two layer shader and the detail shader were really exactly the same except for where they pull their indices from. Um, and then uh, if you wanted the mission map, you can turn that on. I don't think people use this a lot. I considered removing it, but now that I have the shader compiler, I can add lots of options, and so it's not a big deal. And then the rest of this is going to look like the shader you're used to if you've used uh, Mega Splats before. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm trying to think of other things that are worth uh, mentioning about this. Um, otherwise, it's, it's effectively the same uh, system. Uh, I did fix some other bugs that were hitting people with uh, the train component. Oh, another big, uh, big bug was um, a couple, uh, well, one person in particular had had an issue where when he was zooming up close to the stuff on the map, it looked very um, grainy and stuff. And it turned out that on uh, certain graphics cards in DX11, uh, the way that I was computing the uh, texture gradients um, for sampling 
was a little too optimized. Uh, I was a little um, bold with the optimization, and uh, and so it caused on certain machines on Windows uh, the MIT maps to choose the wrong MIT map level, uh, and so that is now fixed. Um, it did not really add significant time to the shader. Um, it just required a bunch of plumbing, uh, and so yeah. So hopefully that fixes um, you know fixes that issue. And uh, I think that's about it for this patch. I tried to get a feature in to convert standard Unity trains uh, for this week, but I did not finish it in time. Um, it is uh, partially in the, um, if you've used the color to splat stuff, uh, there's actually a new mode here um, called splat texture for the mapping mode. And that attempts to map uh, from a image uh, that is a traditional splat map image from Unity train um, that I wrote a little exporter for, uh, to the brushes in Megasplat. Um, I have not finished this, though, uh, so it does not work very well yet, but uh, in the coming weeks I will get that going. Uh, then It's a little clunky right now in terms of, like, exporting this image for the terrain uh, for its splat map data and then, you know, bringing it in here and projecting it onto your terrain and stuff. But the eventual idea is that you can go into something like Map Magic or one of these other... Uh, you know, uh, train packages that's really uh, popular on the App Store, and you can basically just hit a button, and boom, all your all your textures that were set up in that are just converted into mega splat clusters, uh, which gives you that anti-tiling, you know, randomization and stuff. Um, however, the real integration that I would love to see, uh, if anybody from any of the train packages is, is uh, out there, is um, an, a deep integration that actually takes advantage of the hundreds of textures available in Megasplat, because I think that will potentially let you get much richer texturing than, than just the traditional, you know, four or eight uh, texture sampling. Um, so, uh, I think that's it for this week, and um, I'm hoping to get this uh, into release soon. I still need to do some more testing, and if anybody is really into this package and doesn't mind uh, playing with broken versions early, uh, I would like to get one or two beta testers um, who can uh, who I can send these versions to early before I release uh, and sort of help me stabilize things so I uh, one break less and uh, and uh, catch more things before before release. Uh, so thanks for listening and uh, you know give me a holler on the forums if you have some thoughts or ideas and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye.